Good morning, Church on the Hill. Welcome to day two of the fast. Uh, as I'm fasting, I am traveling through the book of Joel. Uh, the Lord really prompted me on this past Wednesday to open to the book of Joel, and He's had me there since then. And, and uh, as I've been seeking the Lord to fast, usually the Lord will give me a book of the Bible or a passage or something to sort of meditate upon as I'm fasting. And, and this time He did the book of Joel. So. Um, as your pastor, you're going <laughs> to, you're going to walk through this book with me. Um, and I'm not going to necessarily this first week of this fast, this three week fast, uh, I'm not going to tell you what the book of Joel is really all about. I'm going to give you an assignment every day, uh, that I want you to do. And then we're going to simply observe the text. You know, whenever you do a quiet time or take a piece of the Bible and begin to study it, the first thing you want to do is observe it. You don't want to take what you think it says and superimpose it on the word. You want the word to speak for itself. You don't want to make any assumption about what it's going to say. You just want to kind of say, okay, Lord Jesus, um, you, through the power of the Holy Spirit, would you reveal what you are saying in your word to me? And so I want you to simply observe. And what, uh, how I do that is I read through the book of Joel, for example. I read through whatever passage I'm studying. Um, and I read it over and over again. And I mark certain things that, that the Holy Spirit points out. Um, and usually I do that uh, using the inductive study method. Uh, I do that by finding some keywords and noting them. And I literally draw and I keep a little... Um, thing here, like for example, this first one here, I'm going to kind of keep it simple here. The first one in Joel, the first key word that I'm marking is the word locust. And I, I took a colored marker and I drew a picture of a locust. And and in the, actually in the first little area there in the book of Joel, you can see there's some words locust over and over again. Um, so today, I simply want you to take your Bible, get some colored pencils or something that you can mark and, and, and come up, and I want you to mark some key words. The key words I want you to mark are the word locust, Zion, return, the phrase I will, and never again. And I've kind of made a card to kind of um, <clears throat> guide you on this process. So make, these are all the keywords we're going to look up. But today, I just want you to do the word locust, Zion. There's a, the little mark that I did for Zion. Return, I will, and never again. Now, you can use any symbol you want. These are symbols that I came up with. You're under grace and under law. You can do whatever symbol you want to do. Um, uh, but uh, those are the ones that I came up with. And today, all I want you to do is, is simply mark those key words in the book of Joel. And I want you to observe what the Bible is saying. Uh, and then tomorrow, we're going to mark some more keywords. We're going to do, do some other keywords tomorrow. Uh, you're not going to do all of these today. Remember, I just want you to do those, those five, Locust, Zion, they're on your screen there. Return, I will, and never again. Mark those. So how I do it is I literally read through the entire book of Joel, which is only three chapters. It's, it's a very short book. Um, I read through it the first time, and I mark every time I see the word locust. And you're probably going to be going, man, I don't get this at all. I don't understand this. I have no idea what God's saying in this passage. Then you're going to read through again and mark every time you see the word Zion. And then you're going to read through it again and mark every time you see the word return. And then you're going to read through it again and mark every time you see the, the phrase, I will. And read through it again and mark every time you see the words, never again. And so as you do that, what you're doing is you're observing. You're observing what the text says on your own. And this way you can learn to study the Bible without necessarily needing a commentary or anything like that. Anything like that. Now, I do want to give you a little bit of, of commentary about the book of Joel. Um, although we know nothing about Joel, we, we really do know very little, nothing <laughs> about Joel, uh, nor the exact time of the writing of this, or uh, we know that other than what we read in this short prophetic book about him, really. Joel's message is significant, though. Um, when Peter preached on Pentecost, he explained Pentecost in light of a prophecy set in Joel. You know, he quotes in Acts chapter 2 uh, on the day of Pentecost 14 through 21, he quotes Joel 2, 28 to 32. So uh, those of you who went through Acts with us, you're going to see that, you know, this passage uh, really has a little bit about what 
Peter was saying there on the day of Pentecost. Joel uses a present day plague. Sound familiar? <laughs> he uses a present day plague during his time to call, to call God's people to repentance. And as he does this, Joel, like the other prophets, warns them of the coming day of the Lord. A day that is as sure as the promises of God. And so that's as much as I want to give you right now. Read this knowing that Joel is taking a present day plague that he's experiencing, that they're experiencing of locusts and other things. And he is uh, using that to call God's people to repentance in view of the coming day of the Lord. So um, I know you're going to enjoy, enjoy this study. Uh, I've rambled enough this morning. Time for you to get in the word and mark these key words. Uh, look now, let me pray for us before we get into our study. Dear Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for Joel. Lord, I pray that you would guide us. Holy Spirit, illuminate your word for us. Uh, would you make it clear, Lord, as we're marking these key words today, we want to observe what you're saying. And Lord, not put anything of us in your word, but we want to take everything out of there that you want us to see. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus, for the word. God, again, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I love you. And I hope to see you soon.